Fujifilm X100V comes out of the box as close to the perfect street photography camera that I've ever used. However, to tailor the camera to the individual, it can be made a little bit better with some carefully chosen accessories. This is my list of the best accessories for the Fujifilm X100V. Everything is listed in the description below and the links specifically to those products are not affiliate links. The first product on this list is a LensMate thumb rest. One problem I had with this camera was I tended to accidentally press this focus lever button here and also sometimes I would accidentally change the settings on, on the shutter speed with this dial here. And the thumb rest just allows me to keep my thumb out of the way and keep a good grip of the camera without having to rely on any of the part of the back of the camera here. Some might complain that Fuji didn't design the camera with good enough grip, however to keep that small form factor I do agree that they made the right choice and adding a thumb rest helps for those of us who like to carry the camera in such a way that causes us to hit these buttons by accident. Now most thumb rests create another issue where you can't comfortably reach the shutter speed dial or the ISO dial um, without sort of getting your thumb stuck in there, especially if you've got bigger hands. Lens may have thought about this and they've cleverly designed in this articulating arm so that you can get it out of the way, you can change your shutter speed, ISO or whatever, and then put it back down and get back to shooting. The other thing I appreciate about this thumb rest is that it's finished really nicely and it matches the camera well. It's not finished cheaply, it's not cheap plastic material, it's machined from a rod of aluminium and finished in almost the exact same finish as the X100V itself. So it looks good, it does not look out of place on this camera. And for such a nicely finished camera, I think it's good to have a nicely finished accessory as well. It also feels rock solid. When you move it out, it has this silicon piece on the inside there that will stop it from scratching the body of your camera and it doesn't flex or anything, it just has a good solid feel and that silicon piece goes all the way through here so your thumb has something non-slippy to, to rest against. The next item is a soft release shutter button. This one is from Artisan Obscura. It's handmade from wood in the USA and the shutter button just screws on to where your shutter button release is on the camera and it just sort of raises it up a little bit, makes it a little bit more of a comfortable spot to put your finger. And what I like about this is that it goes really well with the thumb rest. Just your hand will naturally sit that way, especially if you have bigger hands a convex shutter button like this one, your, the, your first knuckle of your finger will rest on top of it as you're holding the camera. And it just has a good comfortable feel. Now this one is a slightly larger button than the other ones that I have. I have multiples of these. And I also have, from Artisan Obscura, a very nice Scottish tartan engraved one that's a little bit smaller. But this one is concave. And although it fits my hand quite nicely and feels comfortable on there, I tend to use the con convex one because I like how that feels on the camera. But this one that's engraved with tartan also has a matching hot shoe cover with the Scottish lion, the lion rampant from the original flag carved on it. So these stay on my X-T2 because I really like having these two pieces together. So that's why I use the other one instead of the Scottish themed ones. But either way, these are fantastic items. They add a touch of individuality, a little bit of style without being overly flashy. And uh, it's just a nice subtle accent to the camera. And I, I really appreciate that. The X100V is the first camera in the X100 series that includes weather sealing. But the camera is only most of the way weather sealed out of the box and you have to add a filter to the front of it in order to complete the weather sealing because this element here moves in and out and I guess they were not able to engineer in a way to not have that happen and still have the camera be so small. So I have a filter adapter here from a company called Squarehood and in order to put it on you have to remove this little ring here and then screw the adapter onto the filter thread there and then you also get your filter this is an old B&H UV filter that I had on another lens but you can get really good filters that are clear and not UV haze filters and they can be fairly cheap but I would recommend not getting the cheapest 
of these. I would recommend getting something that's half decent. B&W make these filters that are pretty good. Tiffin also make high quality ones. And if you're in doubt, go with the Fujifilm one. It's just a bit more expensive. So although it makes the camera slightly bigger, which is unfortunate, it does allow it to, to be weather sealed. So it just gives you a little bit more peace of mind going out in the rain. Now the downside for me with adding a filter is that I now have this large area that I tend to get fingerprints on the camera, especially when I'm walking the dog and putting the camera down to my side. When I reach for it, I tend to like get my finger on the front of it and I kept having to clean them. And in hot days in the summertime, I tended to get a lot of sunscreen on there as well. So it was kind of a pain. So by adding this square hood lens hood, I found that it has stopped me from my fingers getting onto the lens for a start. It's also one of the smallest lens hoods that I could find for this camera. It's nicely made and finished very similarly to the camera. So it's high quality. So not only is it the best looking lens hood for the X100V, but it also serves that purpose for me where it stops me from getting my fingers on the lens or on the filter itself. It comes with these little adjustment screws. So, so if when you're putting it on, it doesn't sit quite straight, you can loosen it off straighten it up so that it's just right and then tighten it back up so there's no fear of it falling off there you go. and i think that is by far the best looking lens hood that i've seen for the x100v it adds a little bit of size again obviously but it doesn't add much compared to some of the other ones that fan out this way and just make it seem a lot bigger than it really should now the final thing that i want to add to this camera is a good strap and the standard strap that comes with the camera works okay, but it kind of spoils the beautiful look of this camera. So what I've got is this 40 inch black leather strap from Clever Supply Co. And they make lots of different straps in various sizes. And I went for the black one because the camera is black and I wanted to stick with that sort of stealthy, minimalist kind of look. I researched a lot of camera straps and what I appreciate about this one is the minimalism. This part here isn't too bulky. On a lot of camera straps, this bit gets really bulky. And for me, that just gets in the way of my hands. And it has a nice simple split ring there. Once I have this strap on the camera, I, I don't intend to take it off very often, if ever. And the best way to get it on is the same way that you get the Fujifilm strap on, is with this little tool that you get in the box with it. I got this strap in 48 inches, which is one of the larger sizes of it. And uh, most people are getting them around about 40 inches. And the reason I got the larger one is because I put the camera over my shoulder when I'm walking the dog a lot. And I like to have it nice and long so that when I've got a jacket over the top of it, it's still gonna be, it's not gonna be too tight when I'm wearing that. So the longer one works well. And then also in the summertime when I'm wearing just shorts and t-shirts, it's long enough that it sits down by my waistline and therefore this doesn't jag into the back of me. So I thought carefully about the length of strap that I needed and what would work best for the way that I shoot. And when I'm out shooting streets, I tend not to have it over my shoulder and I don't really like having it around my neck either. I like to have the freedom of having it around my wrist. This strap is thin enough and it will just wrap around my wrist a few times and that gets the strap out of the way and it gives me some extra security so if I drop it, it's not gonna go too far. The other thing that I appreciate about the leather strap is that the more I use it, the more this is gonna soften up and sort of conform to the way that I use it and it's just gonna have this nice sort of aged patina about it and look awesome. It's also nice and thin, so it kind of suits that minimalist style of this camera but if you like a thicker strap, you can get thicker straps from them. And if you prefer wrist straps, you can also get wrist straps with this, of the same material from Clever Supply Co. Now I want to be clear and transparent that the companies that are featured in this video did send me these products, but they did not send me them with any preconditions that I had to say something nice about them. But I did a lot of homework because I wanted to find quality products that work for how I like to shoot and that were made by small businesses that were functional as well as beautiful. So take that for what it's worth, but you can expect to see these products in any of my future videos where I'm out 
shooting with the X100V. The links in the description are not affiliate links. I don't make any money if you click on it, if you buy their products. I just believe in these companies' products and they're helping me to get a better experience with my X100V and enjoy shooting with it more. If you have any questions about these products, let me know in the comments down below or even reach out to the companies directly. I'm sure they will be happy to answer any questions you have. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I make new videos every week. And if you have the means and want to support the channel, consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash the Liam Gordon. It will go towards me paying for fuel and travel and parking to go out and travel around and shoot street photography and make free videos to put on the internet to help others hopefully shoot better street photography as well. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.